Hello? Saul? Yes. Hey, buddy, it's Ken. Hey, Ken. How you doing, pal? I'm good. And uh, you are preparing to head off to Charleston? Yes, I'm, I'm just doing a gig. Oh, are you? Yeah. I, um, singing, poetry, standing up? Poetry, 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 poetry. Really? I've, all the stuff I've been doing now is surrounding uh, the set the shotgun to the head book. Which is great. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be there, then I have to do uh, two schools in New York. Two schools meaning? Two universities in New York I'm speaking at. And speaking on what, just uh, any particular topic or one, I mean, they ask you to, to choose one or you, uh, you know? I do the same thing. I'm, I'm, I'm primarily there because of the book, but I end up talking about everything. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, God, life, the universe, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. All of the above. All of the All above. Of the um, so when you end up talking about everything, are there different varieties of everything? I mean, every time you get up and go to and do one of these things, it's just sort of you take off and head in a certain direction, play with the audience, and end up covering a lot of topics, that kind of thing? Well, I definitely play with the audience. You know, I've been very moved by... Um, the idea, well, not the idea, but the actual experience of dialogue and what comes out of dialogue. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And what uh, new thoughts and ideas and new ways of expressing thoughts and ideas can be stumbled upon through dialogue. Yeah. And so usually when I'm asked to perform anywhere, I take it upon myself to kind of take the unorthodox approach, even if it's a nightclub, and, um, and say, you know what, I'm going to open the floor up. <laughs> yep. And uh, we're going to make this a dialogue, yeah. especially since I find that there are a lot of people, um, th there's a lot of, of obscure, seemingly obscure references in my work. Yeah. And there seems to be a lot of people with a lot of questions. Yeah. And I think a needless sense of awe and mystery can surround the work uh -huh. if certain things are not explained. Right. You know, you get right. people asking questions just like, what do you do when you wake up? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, Kevin? <laughs> you know, they just want to know, like, your daily ritual. And, right. And it's important to, to, to just be simply oneself in the presence of others who might begin the painful process of idolization. I did um, a book signing. I almost never do book signings I, for various reasons. But 800 people showed up for this thing, so you have the whole sort of process of how are you going to do this, how are you going to move through this. And you start with, one of the reasons I don't like doing book signings when a lot of people show up is they don't let you do it in a bookstore because it won't fit. So they put you in the right. Presbyterian church across the street, right? Right. Exactly. So you, all of a sudden you're in a church and there's a lot of people sitting in pews looking at you and that's sort of exactly how you don't want to think of yourself. And, you know, as somebody who's up here in order to preach to somebody in a certain right. sense. And it's more like you're talking about you want to dialogue, you want to find out what's going on, you want to get some back and forth. And so it's the same kind of process, though. Some, a lot of the people are really um, um, putting a lot of projections on you and building you up in a very, in a very certain way. Right. And you have to be able to, it's a very fine line, I think, because there's, if I can sort of obviously revert back to um, the, the performances that you give, I think there's a real greatness in the performances that you do. And yet at the same time, you don't want somebody to misinterpret that in a way that fantasizes it or over-idealizes it. And I think, exactly. you know, so, so that's a really um, important to have that kind of dialogue. So on the one hand, they can acknowledge um, a certain radiance or a certain brilliance when it shows up every now and then, but it's also two human beings interacting right there. Exactly, and that's the most important that's thing. That's the most important thing. You no, know, I think that's the most important thing. And also, I know that I think my background has pretty much always had me in a public setting. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, whether I've been doing theater or rapping or break dancing, um, I've been in a public setting. And I've grown quite, quite comfortable on the stage or mm -hmm. interacting with large groups of people and even being uh, seemingly, uh, it's a hard thing to express, but I guess somewhat intimate with a large group of people. Yeah. Meaning, yep. you know, that I'm able to talk from a personal place. Yeah. 
in front of large groups. In fact, sometimes I find the challenge may be for myself to be intimate on a one-on-one basis versus... <laughs> <laughs> I, I know exactly what you mean. There, it, it's strangely enough, there's something yeah. about you can be, uh, there are moments you can be incredibly open and honest with a thousand people and you choke up in the presence of, uh, of one world, person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, I know you told me that once that, um, uh, one of the things I was most struck with when, whether I listened to hip hop music you've done or the movie Slam or particularly the poetry that I really, really love is that you have this exquisite, I've told you this, but you have this, I think, just absolutely brilliant sense of language and it comes out of an obvious love of language and yet you sort of you grew up wanting to be an actor right and so they're not necessarily you know incompatible by any means often acting is a verbal expression but it's also so much more than that so how do you make this transition between on the one hand acting which almost by definition is assuming an other persona and yet also being able to be so intimate on stage with people well I mean, first of all, growing up acting, we studied language. We had to dissect scripts. Yeah. And even though that, that's not what we were there to do in the sense of, like, dissecting language, yeah. we were there, you know, to portray characters and what have you, in order to portray the characters, especially when we were doing stuff like Shakespeare and, you know, just antiquated language, yeah. we had to have intense discussions about meaning yeah. and double meaning. And so that's really how I fell in love with language, between yeah. that and hip-hop, where there were also, you know, meanings embedded in meanings embedded in meanings. Um, just the breaking down of, in acting you call it the breaking down of beats and scenes. Right. You know, and right. in hip-hop it's literally the breaking down of beats. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and, and so my love of language began then, and then I see the two as as instantly compatible yeah um and then as far as acting is concerned i mean when you act you you aim to essentially become the character that you're betraying yeah and in a heightened moment of becoming that character on stage or on film mm -hmm. you lose yourself completely mm -hmm. Now, mind you, in order to become that character, you have to raise questions for the character. No. You know, for instance, if you're portraying Hamlet, you know, you have to say, what, what, what does it mean, the idea of, 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 you know, what would it be like if my, my uncle, you know, yeah. killed my father and, and slept with my mother? What would that feel like? <laughs> what, would it, what would it feel like, uh, the idea of, of, of speaking sexually with my mom? Like, like what? <laughs> all these things, suicide, you have to raise the questions that the character would raise so yeah. that, you, because you want to come to an understanding of, of the character. Yeah. In order to come to an understanding of the character, you have to raise those questions for yourself so yeah. that then the age-old tenant, know thyself, comes into play. One of the things that strikes me as I watch people go through acting classes, really good acting classes, is mm -hmm. they strike me much more like psychotherapy classes than, than anything else. One and the same. Yeah, they They're are. I mean, it's, it's astonishing. They're crying within 10 minutes. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're laughing hysterically. <laughs> they're doing group exercises, trust exercises, they call them. Yep. You know, the, the, the improvisations that once again have them raising questions and delving into their memories and their past yep. and, and all the stories that have made them them. And they're analyzing them and acting from them and, and rediscovering themselves. You know, so that the, the whole thing with acting seems to be that, well, in, in, like I was saying, in, 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 in aiming to become, you essentially end up contemplating being. Yeah. So yeah. that the essence of acting is becoming. Yeah. So that it is primarily a study of being. Yeah. And the, uh, another way to say that, it strikes me, is that if you really looked at what you're doing with acting, in order to be that authentic actor, in other words, as you say, to forget yourself and become another role, there can't be any secrets in yourself. There can't be something that you're ashamed of or afraid of showing or any way you're holding back exactly some exactly. part of you because that will make you end up lying, cheating. Yeah. You won't be able to put yourself into another part if you're holding back some part of yourself or hiding some part of yourself. Exactly. So, you know, you become transparent in the paradoxical and ironic sense of assuming another identity. You have to become incredibly transparent in your own. Exactly, and you have to be completely willing to do that. Yeah. Which means that you have to let so much go. It yeah. could be anything from, 
your homophobia to your, you know, whatever it may yep. be. It could be anything. Yep. You have to let it go to live fully in the moment and fully experience all possibilities within that moment as the character, as yourself in an improvisation, however it may be. You have to lose it. You have to let it go. And the, and the best actors are those who are able to let it go. And so that became a, a path of growth and development and evolution for you. Exactly, because through that, I was, uh, when I finally did begin reciting my poetry in public, you know, I was, I was in grad school for acting at the time. Yeah. And I had spent so much of my life on stage practicing all the things that we were just talking about. Yeah. Now, it was beyond acting. It was a true contemplation of being through poetry. Yeah. And just reciting it. And, and, you know, I had a, a beautiful instructor when I was in grad acting school that said, you know, here, we're here to, to learn technique. Yeah. The technique is only here for the days when the muse doesn't strike. Uh, so then the true question, and this is what they said, the true question is how do we get the muse to strike as often as possible? <laughs> and they, de- they then began teaching us yeah. yoga, the yeah. Alexander technique, which we did sometimes for 10 hours a day. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so the whole thing was about just learning how to breathe yep. deeply and and drink lots of water and stay open. And then the technique was kind of on the side, like now when that doesn't work, here's a technique. Yeah, you turn the crank. Use, you know, to to fool the audience into thinking yep. you're there. <laughs> <laughs> so for all of this, we have Sydney Poitier to thank. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we should. <laughs> Look, look. I grew I, when I grew up. I wanted to be Sidney Poitier. I mean, who yeah. didn't? I, that wasn't he. I mean, I mean, you've told me that he was, you know, one of your heroes and one of the reasons you got into acting. Isn't that? Didn't he really epitomize exactly that? I mean, the authenticity that came off of him and through him was being expressing itself. Yeah. Yeah. There was that. There was. Uh, there was his his stature. His his. Yeah. Um, I mean, in the face of how the media um, had this projected image of black men in all these different forms, exactly. to see this regal, articulate yep. man, yep. you know, who stood eye to eye, face to face with any other, yeah. you know, in, in a beautiful way. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. Yeah. He was truly an inspiration. You know, and because my father was also a great deal like that as well. And your father was um, a reverend. My father's a minister, yeah, yeah. Baptist minister, and then so, um, and so I grew up um, really admiring my dad and admiring his stature and admiring how he carried himself and how he spoke. And my father was an artist before he was a minister. He was a he was a trained opera singer. My God, I had no idea. Yeah. Well, it's, so he had a certain. Well, there was a double kind of righteousness in the good sense about that then, wasn't there? Yeah, definitely, definitely, and there was a there was a great. There was a, a great sense of pride, but beyond that, just a a sense of connection to oneself and to one's spirit yeah. that was unquestioned. Yeah, and you and that's that's you you feel that that was sort of like one of the main things you got from him. Um, a little bit. I would say that the main thing that I got from my dad is this: is that since he was a minister, yeah, he always spoke of his profession as his calling yeah which then even though i knew i never wanted to be a minister i always was in search of what my calling was yeah i always thought in terms of what i wanted to do with my life in terms of what am i meant to be doing yeah in the highest sense of that question yeah and 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 that in and of itself i feel is a is a beautiful way yeah. to approach you know college and all these things where you know, you get caught up in all these ideas of, like, this will make me a lot of money. Yeah. You know, even my dad said, when I told him I wanted to be an actor when I was nine years old, he said, I'll support you as an actor if you get a law degree. You know? Yeah. So, so that, <laughs> because he, he just didn't want us to be poor. <laughs> and he had this idea, if all my kids get law degrees, they'll be good. <laughs> you know, they'll but be well off. That's yeah. what, but what's so great about that is that it keeps unfolding. I mean, because it, your highest calling can continue to unfold and unfold and unfold the deeper oh, you exactly. go. Exactly. I grew up wanting to be an actor. Not until I was, I guess, 23, 24 did I get introduced to poetry. Yeah. 
and 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 have a whole world open up for me there and say, wow, this is what I'm supposed to be doing for yeah. sure. And you when know? you did, I mean, you did the um, you, when you when your first poetry readings, you had a, you'd written a sum total of like one poem or something. One poem, yeah. And you came away from that reading with like three gigs. With like ten gigs. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and the gigs were like. <laughs> I swear, for like reading I've, for Allen Ginsberg yeah. and the last poets and girls got here, and it was it was just such a mystical occurrence. Yeah, you know, yet I believed so strongly in the reality of mystical occurrences that yeah. they ceased to be that. Yeah, you know. Well, if ever there was sort of, you know, a lightning bolt of fate, I mean, really, it's just I mean, you've written one poem, you get up, you deliver the one poem, you get ten offers to open for other acts like Allen Ginsberg and so on. I mean, that, that just doesn't happen. I mean, that just stretches, you know, imagination. You have to start reading some sort of uh, almost destiny into it in certain ways. I mean, it certainly feels yeah. like that subjectively. Yeah. You know, which is weird, again, because that was an amazing year of my life. So many things happened that year Yeah. that it raises the question of just like, I don't I don't even know what the question is. Is it, is it a question of vortexes opening? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, what I don't know what is it, but I'm I'm sure you've had the experience too of just certain years where just pivotal things happened that shifted everything. Yeah, and let me let, let let me switch it on the subjective side and say, don't you sometimes when you reflect on stuff like that, doesn't it sort of somehow raise in you an issue of how can I put it, of um, living up to it, of being responsible to this. And on the one hand, it's a calling, but on the other hand, it's sort of like you got called. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and, and it's sort of how do you step into that responsibility that, that is your calling? Because that's what I find so interesting about these things. Um, great talent, and I'm, I mean, I don't care what kind of talent, it's a tennis player or a great gardener or a William Shakespeare. It, yeah. it, it, to the extent that it's great, it, there's always this peculiar demand for responsibility, you know, that you have to be authentic about it. You have to resonate with just every fiber of your being, or somehow you're lying to that talent, you know. Right. And that's like the worst thing you can do with your life is to lie to your it's talent. Like, oh, my God, yeah. Well, I find that the, that the, the challenge itself, is, and it's not a challenge, really. It's just a matter of... I truly love what I've been asked to do in a sense. And I don't even have to think of it in those terms of yeah. asked to do. You yeah. know, I love it. I love what I do. Yeah. I love it. I love the process of, 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 of something ending up on a page and me looking at it and going, where did that come from? <laughs> what is that? I don't even know what it means. And I can't wait to figure out what it means. And it may be 10 years and sometimes 10 years or five years do pass. And I'm like, Hmm. See, that's I what I think. Yeah, see, I think creati- I think the art at its best is creativity is, you know, our own highest self speaking through us. And if sometimes that's why artists feel almost like they're channeling, but at the same time, they know it's their own self. It's their best self, their deepest self, their highest self, however you want to think of that. And it's almost as if, and that's why sometimes I think every great artist has just that experience that you're describing. Is sometimes you'll, go, you'll look at something that you've done, but you look at it and you'll go, oh my God. That, yeah. that I can't, that is so much bigger than I am. Where on earth did that exactly. come from? Exactly. You know, oh my God, I, I, I know what he's talking about. And he's talking about everything. And I don't even know if he knows what he's talking about. He probably only knows one part of it because I know that feeling. I know that feeling of, of, of you know, someone asked me um, at a reading, you know, like, what does a particular line mean? You know? Yep. And, and, and I gave my interpretation. And they said, oh, well, this was my interpretation. I heard their interpretation, and I was like, wow, that's better. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> I, I, I was like, I think you're on to it. Thanks. <laughs> you know, that, that is what I think it means. <laughs> and this, too. And this, too. You know, it's like all interpretations are valid. Yeah. And because it, it, it really comes from this universal pool. Yeah. That, you know, like, I have the beautiful experience of stepping off the stage and someone saying, thank you. Thank you for articulating um, something that I've been trying to voice for a long time, and right. I go, wow, thank you for trying to voice it for a long time, because that attempt to voice it somehow privied me with the opportunity to voice it, like the connection. I feel the same way when I read your work, Ken, like, and, and except I don't even feel a level of, of, of 
this is something I've been trying to voice mm -hmm. I, because I don't know if I would know how to voice it. You know, like reading your work and being exposed to it has has served as some sort of like filing or shelving system in my mind. <laughs> it's like I have so much more space to play. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it, it's it's taken. I've, I've put thoughts together and say, oh, okay, these these go in. Right, these go, right, you right. know, and I'm able to just organize thoughts and and objectively. Yeah. Through reading your work, it's the weirdest thing. Yeah. It, it, it like it cleanse. It, it was a cleanse of sorts. Yeah. You know, but an organizing cleanse. It, it organized so many thoughts and so many uh, ideas and what have you. And I walk away. Um, much more open and much more, uh, like I said, with with much more space to to take a new idea. Yeah. You know, and 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 maybe even put it in a category. And I'm one who's often been against categories. Right, right, right. You know, yet the categories that I feel that you have uh, relegated uh, senses of consciousness and what have you have worked tremendously. And there's a kind. Well, which I really appreciate, and I think I also share a kind of a, a distrust or a, 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 of categorization itself because it can be so misused. But you and I have both, in, in I think one of the reasons that we've we've crossed paths and, and kind of had a, a recognition in each other and in each other's being. I mean, just you and I sitting together, we recognize something in each other, and I think part of what that is is we've increasingly grown more integral, meaning more comprehensive, meaning our calling is to be embracing more and more and more and giving expression to more and more of that kind of thing definitely and so the categories in a sense what i try to do with my work is is include all categories if you will and by including so many of these different things you make room you make more room in a sense in your own mind for all these various um, um, areas and aspects and so there's a kind of i i do i, I get a similar kind of thing though that in a sense that you do, and one of the comments I get most often is that people will say, yeah, thank you for doing that because somehow I recognize something in it. It, it. And they might even say, you know, I think I could have done that myself, or thank you for writing that book, or thank you for writing the book that I wanted to write or that I could have written. But there's a recognition in it that they just, it's, it's a spaciousness that they know I'm not just making up. Exactly. It's a spaciousness it that they have themselves, and they'll go the same kind of thing. Thank you for saying that because I was trying to do that, and I know exactly what you mean. And that's the, the greatest compliment thing. I get. Yeah, I think it's so beautiful because it empowers people. Like it, 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 it's whereas people may come up with this idea of like, wow, this guy is brilliant or something like that, which I don't know what to do with. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it is beautiful to for people to feel as if they could have, and and for you to know that or for me to know that yeah you really could have you know and you, you probably did and you helped and, and like there's this it's a beautiful thing it's like i think of like say you know an actor like leonardo dicaprio or something i don't think someone walks up to him and says thank you you know for doing the titanic you know yeah, I, right. I could <laughs> I, you really played the role in the way i, I could have played it or you know like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always wanted to do that. Um, I, I possibly, what it is, I think, particularly in a certain type of creative um, act, you and I were, were talking about just um, and the whole idea of kind of a channeling. In a sense, the I, I think what we resonate with is because in any creative act we really are kind of tapping into that highest self, and because in some sense that highest self is the self of everybody. Exactly. That, that's the recognition. And so people can actually come up to you and say, Saul, God, thank you for saying that. You know, God, because that's just what I was feeling or it's just what I was thinking. Thank you for saying that for me. And then maybe they'll give their interpretation and you'll go, oh, that's what I was saying. Thank you. Exactly. It's like it's exactly. oneself, you know, doing it. And that's what... I, the, yeah, you know. it's amazing. I've had people hand me poems after reading them and say, I wrote this the same time you were writing that. Yeah, same thing. And, wow. and, 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 it's, and it's amazing because it's so connected. Yeah. You know? that, it's, <laughs> it's all these. Um, oh my God! Uh, the, the, it's um, exactly what you said at the beginning, though. It's an, it's another way of um, connecting with being that then is becoming, and that's the artistic act is the becoming. But obviously, what we what we try to do in our own way is to get out of the way enough right. that that voice can come through. Exactly. 
Yeah. I find that that's much of my editing process is yeah. going through stuff that I've written and crossing myself out. Yeah. <laughs> Saying, yeah. Oh, I, I, I look at one stanza and I'm like, where did that come from? And I look at the next one I'm like, oh, that came from me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that came from that came from Saul. Let's get rid of that. <laughs> oh, oh God! And there, but there is also there's something um, something rather. I mean, you have to be careful about. You know, obviously, it's it's easy to get caught in sort of you know infantile omnipotence and all that kind of stuff. But there really is something quite extraordinary in 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 the artistic act because there's a kind of um, you know when your intention is pure in a certain sense, I think it makes it easier to get out of your way, to, you know, to get yourself aside, and and to let being speak through you. And I think that's um, you know in a certain sense, no wonder you were drawn to being an actor because, as we were saying, paradoxically, acting is the opposite. People think acting is a way to lie effectively, you know, to be somebody else effectively, to pretend you're somebody else. It's actually a way of being unrelentingly truthful in, an, exactly. in a character. And I think possibly that was, you know, there's a whole continuity of your own calling to that, to that being. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you've voiced it beautifully. That's exactly what it is.